Hi, Peter Balker here and welcome to today's edition of The Transition Guy. Now today I want to speak to you about the Stockdale Paradox, why confronting reality is vital to success. Massive credit for today's edition must go to BigThink.com and author Michael Grassi, who really put together a great article I came across and this article has made today's edition truly possible, so thanks a lot Mike. Our ability to balance realism and optimism in a dire situation is a key to success. The Stockdale Paradox is a concept that was popularised by Jim Collins in his book Good to Great. If you've not read it, please do. It was named after James Stockdale, former vice presidential candidate, naval officer and Vietnam prisoner of war. The main gist of the idea is that you need to balance realism with optimism. In paradox, we often find some of the greatest bits of wisdom. The difficulty in understanding a paradox comes from the fact that when it's heard as a maxim in some kind of verbal conversation, verbal form, it's, contra it's contradictory and not intuitively grasped. This said, paradoxes are best understood through experience. The Stockdale paradox is one such concept that first glance takes a bit of getting used to as it can be quite conflicting and not easy to fully grasp. This paradox was first put forward in Jim's book, Good to Great, which is one of the best self-help and leadership books out there. Author Jim Collins found a perfect example of this paradoxical concept in James Stockdale, former vice presidential candidate who during the Vietnam War was held captive as a prisoner of war for over seven years. He was one of the highest ranking naval officers at the time. During this horrific period, Stockdale was repeatedly tortured and had no reason to believe he'd make it out alive. Held in the clutches of the grim reality of his hell world, he found a way to stay alive by embracing both the harshness of his situation with a balance of healthy optimism. Stockdale explained this idea as the following. You must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. In the most simplest explanation of this paradox, it's the idea that you are hoping for the best, but acknowledging and preparing for the worst. After years in captivity, Stockdale eventually made it home. The ability to acknowledge your situation and balance optimism with realism comes from an understanding of the Stockdale paradox. This contradictory way of thinking was the strength that led James through those trying years. Such paradoxical thinking, whether you consciously know it or not, has been one of the defining philosophies for great leaders making it through hardship and reaching their goals. You can see it today with the coronavirus epidemic that's sweeping the world. Whether it's weathering through torturous imprisonment in a POW camp or going through your own trials and tribulations, the Stockdale Paradox has merit as a way of thinking and acting for many trying times in a person's lives. This paradox holds a great lesson for how to achieve success and overcome difficult obstacles. It also flies right in the face of unbridled optimists and those positivity peddlers whose advice pervades nearly every single self-help book or Google spill out there. Quite apt when you read so many of the social media posts at present regarding the whole coronavirus outbreak. I'm afraid there's no hugging our way out of this one. In a discussion with Collins for his book, Stockdale speaks about how the optimist fared in the camp. And the dialogue goes as follows. Who didn't make it out? Oh, that's easy, he said. The optimists. The optimists, I don't quite understand. I'm, co I'm completely confused, given what you said earlier. Oh, the optimists. Oh, they were the ones that said we're going to be out by Christmas. And Christmas would come, and Christmas would go. Then they'd say, we're going to be out by Easter. Then Easter would come and Easter would go, and then Thanksgiving, and then it would be Christmas again, and they died of a broken heart. Applying the Stockdale Paradox to your daily life can be very useful,
because we all want things to work out for ourselves. We all want to be successful, happy and have achieved something no matter how trivial or personal it will be. Reaching this state of accomplishment isn't going to come just by positive visualisation. That's all well and good and it makes us feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside. It's why so many people like to listen to the endless screeds of business gurus and motivational shysters promoting us the world if only we learn to change our mindset. Confronting the entire brevity of your situation is instrumental for success. There's a bit of positive visualisation in there, of course, but it needs to be counterbalanced with the thought that you can utterly fail and to put it frankly, your current existence might be absolutely miserable and hopeless. And this is the case for so many business owners right now with the coronavirus. So bear that in mind. But don't lose faith in your wildest dreams. Just might, they just might come true, hence the paradox. It's not about choosing which side to take, but instead learning to embrace both feelings in opposition to one another and realise they are necessary and interconnected. On a higher level, and when it comes to business leadership and management, this duality helps to guard against the onslaught of disappointment that will hit you in the business world. Many of you have experienced this with the global lockdown due to the coronavirus pandemic. Optimism may drive innovation, but that needs to be put in check to help ensure that you're still on this plane of reality and not bumbling naively in something that can't happen. It's a great mechanism to keep yourself grounded and also entertain the idea of being incredibly successful in whatever pursuit you're after. The Stockdale Paradox can help an organisation assess a current situation and plan accordingly to tackle the challenges that they come across. It enforces both the idea that you can be positive and believe you will overcome the difficulties while at the same time you're confronting the most brutal facts of your current situation. But you must confront those brutal facts. The latter is what turns people off because it can be misconstrued as being negative or overly pessimistic when it's not. What other ideas similar to the Stockdale Paradox exist? We find time and time again that this line of thought fosters success in the most dire and inhumane of situations. Viktor Frankl, a world-renowned psychologist and Holocaust survivor, wrote in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, that prisoners within a Nazi concentration camp usually died around Christmas time. He believed that they had such strong hope that they'd be out by Christmas that they just simply died of hopelessness when that didn't turn out to be true. Here's a passage from his book regarding this thought. The death rate in the week between Christmas 1944 and New Year's 1945 increased in the camp beyond all previous experience. In his opinion, the explanation for this increase did not lie in harder working conditions, nor the deterioration in our food supplies, or the change of wealth or new epidemics. It was simply that the majority of prisoners had lived there in naive hope that they would be home again by Christmas. As the time drew nearer and there was no encouraging news, the prisoners simply lost courage and disappointment overcame them. This had a dangerous influence on their powers of resistance and a great number of them died. Frankl did develop the concept called tragic optimism. That is an optimism in the face of tragedy. This idea has gone through many names and iterations throughout the years. One that you may be able to relate to is the idea that whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Tragic optimism is similar to the Stockdale paradox as they both express a paradoxical idea about acknowledging your current difficulties intermixed with a positive belief that in the end you will still triumph. And to bring it to today, I'm seeing this playing out so much with the global pandemic when it comes to the coronavirus. If we take the information we are getting from the governments, they don't really know what they're doing. They've got all the best intentions in, at heart, but we're talking about now countries have been locked down. Initially it was a two week lockdown, three, three week lockdown, two month lockdown, some are saying six months, some are saying 18 months. Nobody really knows. 
the big challenge we've got is that many people in their own heads have got their own timing. And if we're not careful, what will happen is that as time goes on, if we are not properly prepared for it, if we haven't got the right mindset, if we lose hope, when we do finally come out of it, people are not going to be ready to re-engage with their business and move it forward. And this is one of the situations that we're just going to have to be realistic about. People are going to get through this whole sort of situation by sort of hook or crook, whether it's not paying bills or whatever. But it's our ability to come out of it once the sort of lockdown is lifted. That's going to be the key. We need to be ready to get out the traps running. And our mental state is going to be crucial to that. So my question to you is, yes, we are going to go through a really difficult time. What is your frame of reference to your timescales currently and how does it relate to the Stockdale Paradox? Have you got the adequate level of personal support you need to be able to get you through this? And we all need people to talk to. So make sure you go out there and find yourself someone confident you can talk to. And it isn't your other half, it isn't your significant partner. It's going to be someone that's third party that is out of the fishbowl that can see what you can't see. If you need a coach, go and find yourself a coach. There's so many great people out there that you can have a chat with. And a lot of people are giving their services. So they're saying, okay, do you know what? Come and speak to me for free. Let's see what we can do for you. There is plenty of support out there. You just need to go and find it. Now, if anything I've spoken to you today really sort of resonates with you and you want to have a chat, head over to bulka.com and get in touch. Just don't leave it. Make sure you've got the support around you. Thank you for sort of tuning into today's episode. Hope you got some great value out of it, but do take action. And remember, failing to learn is learning to fail.